Colombia were the fourth-placed side in CONMEBOL qualifying, finishing behind Brazil, Uruguay and Argentina. They were only a point behind Sampaoli's side too and scored more goals. James Rodriguez, who has re-established himself as a world-class central midfielder at Bayern Munich this season, led the scoring charts for Jose Pekerman's side with six goals. Under Pekerman, Colombia play a 4-2-3-1, with Hammers playing in the 10 position ahead of a solid midfield pivot of Carlos Sanchez and Abel Aguilar. Colombia press reasonably assertively, especially out wide. Their 4-2-3-1 flexing into a 4-4-2 or a 4-5-1, with the wingers happy to push on should the ball go wide. Offensively, Colombia tried to rotate the ball, with Sanchez dropping deeper to collect from the centre-backs. James does not play quite as he does for Bayern, starting higher up the pitch, the focus is on him to create from the hole, but he will drop off and play long balls out wide too. There is pace and skill on the flanks in Luis Muriel, Mateus Urebi and Juan Cuadrado, while right-back Santiago Arias has had a strong season for PSV. Colombia are strong across the pitch. Captain Radamel Falcao and standing Carlos Baca are both capable goalscorers, though fitness is always an issue with the former, while young centre-back Davidson Sanchez was outstanding for Tottenham this season. Keep an eye out for the dynamic young Levante and Boca midfielders Jefferson Lerma and Vilmar Barrios, who have impressed in their respective leagues this season and could do so again here if played. Colombia should be strong enough to qualify, but doubts persist over their longer-term ambitions. AFC qualifying pitted Japan against Syria and others, including Afghanistan in the second round's Group E. Japan comfortably won the group, only dropping points in a nil-nil draw at home to Singapore. They then progressed to Russia with a solid performance to top Group B in the third round, taking first ahead of Saudi Arabia and Australia. Pachuca and former AC Milan midfielder Keisuke Honda scored seven in qualifying, and Shinji Kagawa netted six. Manager Akira Nishino won titles with Gamba Osaka, including the AFC Champions League, and coached Japan at the 1996 Olympics to wins over Brazil and Hungary. Nishino sets up Japan as a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3, with Makoto Hosebi anchoring. Japan press and look to counter through quick interchanges once they've won the ball. Hasebi, consistently impressive at centre-back or defensive midfielder for Eintracht Frankfurt this season, is partnered by Cerezo Osaka's Hotori Yamaguchi. Gaku Shibasaki of Getafe may also start, though much will depend on whether Japan choose the solidity of this option or Shinji Kagawa's creativity. Kagawa is a key man, despite being out of favour with Nishino's predecessor, and his ability to feed the wide men, Keisuke Honda and Genki Haraguchi, could be key, as Japan can struggle against compact teams. Honda especially will drift in from the flanks and is a real threat. Japan can otherwise find it tricky to score. Shinji Okazaki is vastly experienced, but works best in tandem. None of the other options have totally convinced, but Japan are technical, well-organised and quick. The group is tough though, any team could beat any other, and Japan's fate will hang on their ability to defend well, which isn't their strongest suit. Poland topped Group E of UEFA's qualifying section and Robert Lewandowski scored 16 goals, the joint highest in World Cup qualifying overall as his side came through a tough group, losing only to Denmark in Copenhagen and drawing with Kazakhstan in Astana. Poland's next best goalscorer was Hull City's Kamil Grzycki with three. Lewandowski, who was once again the Bundesliga's top scorer, netted almost 60% of Poland's goals. Poland went through qualifying with Adam Nawalka playing a fairly straightforward counter-attacking 4-2-3-1. In the friendlies in March, though, he experimented with a 3-4-3, using a midfield pivot of one holder in Krzysztof Mazinski or Grzegorz Kregowiak, alongside playmaker Karol Anetti, who is no slouch defensively either. Lukas Piszczek played at right centre-back, not his normal right full-back, with wing-backs ahead. Poland still played directly, with quick transitions forwards to the exciting young Napoli attacking midfielder Peter Zielinski and the Hull City winger Kamil Grozicki, or Napoli Zaradias Milik, who plays off Lewandowski. The wing-backs get high to support, and the aim is to create space for Lewandowski to run onto quick crosses or short through passes once the ball is played forwards quickly. Of course, Poland may play with a 4-2-3-1 instead. Such a testing of different tactics speaks of Nawalka's desire to ensure that Poland can approach different opposition with different systems, and Poland would be the only side playing a back three in this group, which could actually help. With Lewandowski always potent, the steal of Kamil Glick at the back, and the excellent Wojciech Szczesny in goal, Poland are a strong side. They will expect to progress, but will not underestimate Senegal or Japan. 
Senegal, the darlings of 2002 when they defeated the champions of 98, France, saw off Madagascar in a two-legged second round of CAF qualifying 5-2 before topping Group D, defeating 2017's AFCON third place Burkina Faso, Cape Verde and South Africa. Senegal had a lot of top scorers, Mainbaram Diouf, Sheikh Ndoy, Diafra Sacco, Sadio Mane, but they only netted twice each. Under coach Alio Cisse, Senegal play a 4-2-3-1 with a very solid midfield pairing of Cayute and Idrissa Gay. Badu Ndaye was one of Stoke City's few bright spots last season and can step in well to replace either. This is not a creative midfield, but they will shield the back four, win the ball and often play it straight back to the defence. Kaludu Koulibaly was outstanding for Napoli this season and is a rock at the back with a good range of passing. Senegal play very directly. Mane can play centrally or wide in the attacking midfield, while Keita Balde, the young Monaco winger, is a real talent. The front four will make horizontal and vertical runs, while the back six will play the ball around before it's hit long. Moussa and Diouf are both good options up front, with the former likely to get the start. Senegal will be quick and direct, and teams will need to concentrate against that front four at all times. They do have a lack of creativity in midfield, and if teams can press the back line, this will prevent the ball coming forwards. They will cause opposition teams issues at one end, but may not have enough to get through a very tricky, even group. 